classic. Let's go. All right, welcome back to what used to be your uh, adjudicated Oof. uncle's favorite show until they voted for the adjudicated rapist, 34 count felon. One time convicted felon, making him the first convicted felon president with two cases pending, two impeachments, six bankruptcies, and stolen state secrets, sold state secrets. You wrap yourself in the cloak of religion to vote for him because you don't want women to have rights, yet turn your eyes the other direction when it comes out that your Catholic priests and other priests are having sex with your young boys and young men or molesting them. But I guess that's all okay as long as we have cheap eggs. Wait, that's not how the economy works or tariffs work. So here we go. Now that you know where I stand, <laughs> now that you know where I stand, in just simply stating facts, I want to let everyone know, no, I did not vote for somebody that called me trash. Uh, if you didn't know, I am a white passing, half white, half Puerto Rican. That wasn't the beginning of it, though. It started in 2017 because I used to be a Republican. Yeah, crazy. I changed to an independent in 2017 and then changed to a Democrat in 2020 simply because I live in an echo chamber. Wait, no, shoot. That's what you guys are saying about us, even though you vote for the same 50 to 80 year old. I have to say 80 now because he's 78, but you guys forgot that. You needed a strong voice. 50 to 80 year old white dude, but you don't live in an echo chamber. Why did I switch sides? I don't know. I started talking to people and listening to them. But that's what you think an echo chamber is. So anyway, also, I must be atheist. No! Oh my god, I'm not! I'm the only Christian on this show! But I live in an echo chamber. But I've got two atheists I work with. But it's an echo chamber. But but it's an echo chamber. So anyway... Again. <laughs> <laughs> now that you know where I stand as the Christian, former Republican, gun owner that voted simply not just for decency, for intelligence, for someone that hasn't filed for bankruptcy six times yet is considered a business person, who has never lived on a farm yet is considered relatable to farmers, I'd like and to start the show. Sometimes you pee sitting down, just sometimes. <laughs> Only sometimes. You Only are sometimes. The patriarchy. Yes, yes, and I, I, I have this, this saying, I, I like to say all the time, why do, and this pisses Josh off, by the way, because I am kind of a fence sitter in most situations, and he always gets mad at me for it. He likes uh, that fence sometimes. But, but yeah, it's the truth, it's the truth, because I like to talk to everybody, I like to form an intelligent decision, and sometimes I like to say, hey, you know what, I don't like my allies. And I was really hoping when we saw a Nazi flag on the back of a boat, wait, two Nazi flags, sorry, it was double. Uh, two Nazi flags on the back of a boat that said Trump 2024. Some of you whose great-grandparents fought in World War II. Mine, USS Indianapolis, USS Cole, was actually in D-Day. Blessed enough to know. What was his him. name? Would say. Yes, yeah. Bob Wheeling, actually. Bob Wheeling. Uh, I was blessed enough to know the man. Would have said, no. No, I don't like my allies. Or perhaps when Nick Fuentes came out and said, her body, my choice, forever... You guys would have said, you know what? I don't like my allies. These are not the allies I want. But you didn't. You didn't. In fact, you came up with some of the craziest slogans I've ever seen. A lot of women, that, for some reason, think that this is a, a slogan, said, my body, his choice. It doesn't make any sense. Because yeah. when, hopefully this never happens to you, but when you are assaulted, the defense can't wait to hold up that tweet. From 2024, didn't you say your body, his choice, ma'am? And you didn't yeah. think that through, did you? You, you did it to yeah. make a statement because in this country, we don't like to talk about actual issues. Because I never had one person that, you know, doesn't live in my echo chamber, that knows yeah. my values and my stance, reach out to me to ask me, hey, why is it that you're going to vote for Kamala Harris and Waltz? Yeah. You didn't. You wanted to sit in your echo chamber and get your news from Candace Owens and Shapiro and... Uh, Joe Rogan, because they're all very into... No, they just have big audiences. You don't want to read a book, and we're going to talk about a drunk classic this week where they burn books, right? Sorry. <laughs> all right. Sorry, Josh. All right, let's 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 get to it. We've got three butter on top. <laughs> and others use thumbs. We use the stuff that gets you drunk. All right. Now, 
Jordan, lead us off with what you thought of Heretic, what was my butter on top last week. Let me yeah. just interject with I agree with Fry. I mean, that was a lot, but I just wanted to say that. <laughs> Thank you. Right. I appreciate it. Moving on. Yeah. Uh, Heretic. Uh, it was a huge win for the Mormons. Um, <laughs> They needed. I, I think they needed one. Uh, so pat yourself on the back, Mormons. You got some, uh, you know, touchdown for you. Um, touchdown for you. It was, uh, you know, it was good. It was good. Uh, what's it? It's Hugh Grant or some guy that Huge looks like Grant. Hugh Grant, right? <laughs> I don't know. I get, there's like three British actor it, guys. It is Hugh Grant. It okay. is Hugh Grant. There are no, three Colin British Perth. actor guys that I. Always, yes, get their names mixed up. Um, you could interchange them, and you wouldn't notice the difference. The girls act their butt off, and yes, the one who you believe to be the final girl does not end up being the final girl. She um, was killing it, though. Yeah. She was killing it in that role. She was so good. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, it's very dialogue-heavy for most of the movie, but it's, it's mm. really actually really creepy. A pretty scary movie. Uh, it, cool. it, it's it's open to a lot of interpretation. It's kind of one of those mm -hmm. movies where at the end you're kind of going, what actually happened, what didn't, what was real, what was not, you yeah. know, uh, supernatural kind of elements on it keeps you guessing. It does false kind of sell you on like as you mentioned last week, like the house is supposed to play a major role. Yeah, uh, in the it trailers, does, it doesn't. It totally. Um, you know, does the switcheroo on you and takes a totally different. That's not the the focus of this movie. Like it was mm. kind of you believe it to be, but uh, this yeah. was cool. Really interesting movie. Um, I think I want to give it. I want to give it a. I want to sneak it into a popcorn and two because I just really liked the subject matter, the whole debate, all the debates that they're having. It was I fun. knew it. I yeah, knew. I, I was like, to watch the Monopoly scene. I was like, yeah. Jordan's gonna bleep and love this scene because yeah, yeah, you're yeah. a history buff. You love talking like you, you love an honest, intelligent conversation, uh, conversation that can be uh, I'll take a conversation, too, <laughs> <laughs> that can be held more amongst intellectuals that are will willing to hear out every side of it. So it was like Jordan's going to love this scene. Yeah, it was cool. Did you I know, mm, this is uh, Hugh Grant, did you know Monopoly was invented by Liz Beeper? <laughs> <laughs> it was, uh, I saw a drunk, ep uh, drunk history episode mm -hmm. on the invention of monopoly so i was like i was that yeah. mean the leonardo <laughs> like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. i know this one i know this one yeah. i got it i got it <laughs> Shout out drunk history. Yeah. yeah no i'm with you I, I gave it a popcorn in one because i'm just i just still don't know i need to rewatch it because there are a lot of elements that you can miss easily that are in it uh message men are stupid that was another message. Not Hugh Grant's character, but G Wiz, the person that goes out to save them, is an idiot. Just the dumbest human being. <laughs> anyway, what do you think it's trending at on Rotten Tomatoes right now, Jordan? Um, I'm gonna give it a probably seventy-three. Ninety-three wow. percent on Rotten Tomatoes right now. Wow. So it's it's interesting, and I I did think Hugh Grant kind of acted his tail off. I thought he did good. I I just thought that. Uh, the young lady was a bit better. Sophie Thatcher. Uh, I thought she was great. Chloe East character off and on. Off and on. Some scenes I'm like killing it. Some scenes I was out of it. Yeah, there was that scene that kind of where he's like, one of you has been lying this entire time. I don't want to like give away too much, but like they point to her arm. Yeah. And then he tries to like be like, oh, this is a... Uh, it's some you know microchip, microchip baby. Yeah, it's like, what? <laughs> but but that scene is good. She she plays it off yeah. well, and she remembers what the other young lady told her in that scene. So uh, I'm with you. So Josh, you, you anyway, Jordan again. That is heretic. You give it a popcorn and two. Yeah, I sneak it in there. Okay, all right. Uh, Josh, you it. also got a butter on top for the first time in a while. I should have yeah, started with go. you and I. I got to go to the movies. Uh, man, it was cool. I watched a movie, and I was it was one of those where, like, the day, the day before, I'm like, I'm going to the movies. I don't care what's going on. I'm going there. <laughs> and so the day <laughs> shows up, it and it's like, okay, we're going to the movies, and it's best Christmas pageant ever. And I'm like, well, shit. 
Um, because I, I mean, it just it doesn't sound promising just out the gate. But mm -hmm. uh, we went and saw it anyway. It has Pete Holmes. It has uh, Judy Greer. Uh, you know her? She was in a lot of things. Arrested Development. She was the one who always pulled up her shirt. Um, yes. <laughs> not, a great, not a great example of all of her uh, things that she's been in. But uh, she's, the, the movie centers around her mostly. And it's a uh, quick synopsis. It's this small town. They have a tradition of a Christmas pageant. Today's You haven't said what the name of the movie is yet. The so. best Christmas pageant yeah, ever. Yeah, I did. Oh, um, you did? Okay. My, I apologize. I'm not listening. I apologize. I was trying to pull up the cast for you. <laughs> but the, just, the, the problem is it doesn't is... sound like a movie title. <laughs> right. It doesn't yeah. sound like a movie. Uh, the synopsis, the small town, they have a Christmas pageant. It's the 75th year anniversary of the Christmas pageant. It's the same every year, but things happen, so this year it's going to be a little different. It's based on a book. Um, major characters are the... Uh, I forgot the Herdmans, and it's these like five or six kids that are basically orphans, like their parents just aren't around, and they're the 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 kids that cause trouble all the time. It, it, imagine O'Doyle like the redhead, is. yeah, O'Doyle, or like imagine the redhead from uh, Christmas Story, but six of him. <laughs> you know what I mean? With the where it zooms in on the mouth. Yeah. When I tell you to come, you to come. Uh, yeah, that. Uh, so yeah, six of those, and they. What the movie is that they are the centerpiece of the Christmas pageant. So like they get to be the wise men and Mary and Joseph, and uh, so everyone's like, oh no, oh my goodness, what are they gonna do? Uh, so I didn't know walking into this movie. It's produced by Kingdom Come Productions, and they're out of Nashville. The same ones that made I Can Only Imagine. They make Christian movies for the church. This is church movies. Okay. I didn't okay. know that. As, as mentioned before, I am an atheist. But you know what? It's a Christmas movie. I'm, I'm, it's time for Christmas. Let's watch it. And it ended up being pretty damn good, dude. It's a pretty damn good movie. And Is it? it Were you about, entertained? Yeah, truly, I was entertained. It made me laugh a lot. The kid actors mostly did really good. Like, there's just the little redhead with no front teeth. She's like, ha! And she's always, like, picking up knives and stuff. But um, Be Beatrice... Beatrice. Snyder is her the actress's the, name. The little the little girl. She plays yeah. the angel, yeah. the angel who like talks to the the shepherds and she's like, "Hey, a child is born unto thee!" And she yells at him. She pushes kids down the snow hill. It's great. Um, they smoke cigars. But uh, this movie is based on a 1970s book, and it really plays like that. The narrative plays like a novel, and it's it's nice. It's clean, fun. It's easy. It's not too preachy, but it's it's you know it's about the story of you know the the shepherds. But it's cool though because the kids never heard of it, so they're like, uh, why are they in a manger or in a barn? And they just get mad at people like, why why are they, there's a baby? Why aren't they letting the kids sleep on a bed? And they get really mad and they want to burn the church down. And anyway, um, yeah, popcorn and I say popcorn and one. I think anyone can watch it, and it's just good old Christmas. Good old uh, Christmas. Well, I also got in a Christmas movie for my Butter on Top, which is crazy that we had three Butter on Tops this week. I got in Red One, which is not out in the United States. I think it comes out this week. Is that right, Jordan? Yeah, that's correct. So we've got Lucy Liu, J.K. Simmons, The Rock, Dwayne Johnson, up, huh? Chris Evans, yeah, uh, Kiernan Shipka. Which I think, if I'm not mistaken, I believe, isn't she the actress from Twisters? So she oh. is the actress from Twisters. Okay. So, yeah, Twisters, Long Legs. She crushed it, man. She was good. Here's the thing. This is not necessarily a kid's Christmas movie. There is a debaucherous Christmas party at the House of Krampus, which oh, is no. fantastic. There is a scene in Aruba with... So much stuff that is not typically in a kid's movie. So Okay, so more of a 90s Christmas movie then? It's It, it leans more adult, and there are some funny themes. I, I, I laughed a lot more than the audience did, and I just don't think they got how adult the jokes were. There was yeah. also, in this movie, a lot of parents with their kids, hmm. and I don't think they were expecting it to have some of these jokes. Now, it does have its its wholesome content as well. And it has its funny moments. 
uh, Anna, my wife, made a great point. She said, why were there not more polar bear soldiers? She's like, if you can get one, <laughs> why can't you get more? <laughs> and I was not like, that's, sucks, there's just not enough that's, fish. that's a solid point. That's a solid point. All right. Uh, Chris Evans playing a, a truly deplorable human being was funny, and he plays the role very well. He is also in a scene with Nick Kroll that's pretty funny. Him and The Rock have great chemistry, so I think we're going to see a few more films with Chris Evans and The Rock in them together, kind of like we did with Kevin Hart and The Rock. But yeah, essentially, this is, the, time. Yeah, this is the I'm story to save Santa Claus from a kidnapping. And you get all kinds of mythological creatures to include the Headless Horseman. The CGI in most scenes was pretty decent, not throughout. The dialogue can be weak. It, I enjoyed it, I'm going to be honest. And I had low expectations, I think. I got out of bed, and I was like, oh, i got to go see this movie for the show. And then I sat down, and I was like, you know, that was that was a pretty enjoyable film. I think people are going to like it. I think you're going to get The Rock at his rockiest. Good job for Red One, Popcorn, and One for The Rock and Chris Evans. Go ahead, what Jordan. Do you think, uh, what do you think it is about putting these two Christmas movies out in November, early November at that? Do they figure that people maybe don't go and see these movies in December? Like, No, I think they're going for a launch on streamers by yes, December. Yes, that's ah, correct. So they very, get, the, get the rental. They got to get that rental. Yeah. Yeah. I'll yeah. buy it. Doesn't want to <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Jordan, lead us off on what you were watching this week. Yeah, I watched an older movie. I watched this movie called Falling Down with Michael Douglas, and I believe this came out in like mid '90s. Let me look that up. '93. It came out in '93. Okay. It was a Joel Schumacher movie. Um, and yeah, Michael Douglas just basically plays a male Karen of the past. He is a very kind of conservative, uh, buttoned up, you know, up tidy whitey kind of guy, you know. Tidy whitey. Up oh, tidy is whitey. this the one, the one where he uh, goes unhinged? Yeah, he goes on a rampage yeah. across, uh, I believe, L.A. Yeah, I think so. Somewhere, yeah. Um, he, the movie doesn't tell you exactly why, but basically, it starts with him stuck in traffic, and he just gets out of his car. On the basically on the freeway and just leaves it there and walks off where he gets into some kind of altercation. <laughs> well, he gets in many altercations, but one leads oh. to him coming across a duffel bag of automatic weapons. And, <laughs> um, yeah, then it doesn't age well for this time. It's very triggering for, like, and we're in the age of mass shootings and all these things. Um, it doesn't really bode well for that. It could definitely play out to be some kind of... Uh, 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 what's the word you're, I'm a, where like you have a, when someone does a, a manifesto, there you go. This is, this is an hour and a half of, you know, a playbook of somebody going on a, you know, a killing spree across the city. Yeah. He's, he's just what you would call today, uh, a Trump supporter, basically, uh, Republican. <laughs> um, you know, he gets angry over a Coke can being 85 cents, which in today's time is just like. Wow, that's a fantastic deal, you know, with a dollar fifty, two dollars for a can of Coke at the store. But he just loses his mind over that, trashes the guy's store, um, you know, goes into a burger joint, and they ask him like something stupid, like some little ticky tack thing, and he just has a, yeah, freaks out, pulls a gun on people. It's just this repeating over and over. They just put him in different scenarios, and he freaks out and starts shooting put things up. Um, yeah. This is yeah, back when this you know, was a new kind of idea, like yeah. never really been done before kind of thing. Yeah, I've, I've met people like this, like this kind of personality, this very volatile kind of thing, except they just haven't homicidally snapped yet. So it was very like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was very like, oh, God, kind of like I knew a DMX a guy. persona, all, almost like adjacent to like DMX. Like you never know when he's going to go nuts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Robert Duvall is in it. He is playing a detective. He's playing that like detective on his last day, and there's all this oh. foreshadowing. Like, you know what happens to detectives on their last day of work? You better stay in the office. You know, the ever implying that he's going to get killed. Basically, detectives always get killed on their last day of duty or something like that. I don't know, mm -hmm. uh, but it's cool. They play. They do some trickery with that. Uh, ups the suspense. Uh, yeah, uh, pop one. Josh, we had the drunk classic Jojo Rabbit. 
which literally this time around it made me cry. I'm not gonna lie. Like I literally cried this oh, yeah. time. Not like not like huge tears this time I watched it, but I cried like I definitely had a couple, not streamers, but I had a couple that ran down this time. Uh, the butterfly scene, you guys know what I'm talking about. Josh, what did you mm-hmm. think? Um, once again, this is a popcorn and three movie. Jojo yeah. Rabbit is, yep. I think, yes. Taika Waititi's best work, and I think it's one of the most moving comedies I've ever watched. One of them. Um, mm-hmm. It's so, so funny and so quick, and mm-hmm. clearly Taika Waititi, like, wrote every line of dialogue. Or <laughs> infused his improv into it because they all talk like Taika. But anyway, despite <laughs> that, um, this is a wonderful movie that we should all watch. It's it's uh, obviously about the war and it's about uh, propaganda and uh, preconceived notions and uh, biases and hate. And the best part is, you know, the fucking <laughs> um, w- once you're free, you dance. And that's just such a beautiful ending and such a beautiful message and. <laughs> the things that Scarlett Johansson as the mother was trying to convey to the kid, but the kid's just not listening. That's a fucking, it's a metaphor, guys. Um, uh, Beautiful. It's just so beautiful. Made me tear up. Made me laugh out loud. I love the little fat kid. (laughs) (laughs) What is his name? Yorkie? Yorkie or Yorkie? Yorkie, like the dog. Yeah. (laughs) I'm in need of a cuddle. Um... (laughs) Everyone should watch this movie. When he Everyone waves will like it. At the end, when he waves and drops the the, the rocket launcher. <laughs> I like when, when when they're like sitting in, in uh, sleeping bags playing with their knives, and then yeah. at one part where JoJo is uh, talking, he goes, <laughs> <laughs> just his facial expression is so funny. I love this movie. Love it. Yeah, jo- JoJo Rabbit is one of my favorite movies. I, I do think it should have won. Uh, again, the Oscar. I think Taika should have won the Oscar. This movie was great. It is just great. The very beginning speech uh, mm. in the movie is exactly how Donald Trump would talk to his adult supporters. When he's when Hitler is talking to Jojo, when Jojo's looking in the mirror, and he's giving him the pump up speech. Yeah. Like that's what your what are you American Trump leader boy. thinks of you? Yeah. <laughs> that's what that's what he thinks of you. It's 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 perfect. I've had eighteen kids for Germany. Such a great year to be a woman. Telling, telling, when Rebel Wilson says that line at the camp, because what are they gonna teach the women at the camp? How to have babies. <laughs> uh, there's so many different things in this movie. I said for you to draw me a picture of where Jews live. This is just a stupid picture of my head, and she goes, "Yeah, that's where they live." <laughs> like. It, it's just the subliminal messaging. And I mean, yes, it's kind of heavy-handed, but it's not at the same time. Like, you have to think about what she's saying in that joke. I mean, it is, it is heavy-handed a lot of times, but there's so much sugar on the medicine. And it's just, it it, it doesn't leave you time to be like, okay. Because you're laughing, like, the next moment. Yeah. All right, so the take on tribalism here is, is very important. I think people need to watch this movie and see it. You're a 10-year-old boy who likes dressing up, likes swastikas, and wants to be a part of a club. Mm. That's, I mean, I don't yes. know what else to say about people in our world today. Yes. You've got to know what you're doing is wrong. You've got to know you have, it doesn't matter what color you are, and I'm referring to the party you support, both, actually. There's got to be some human decency in this world, and this movie really drives that home. You, yeah, you've got, I mean, we all... Sorry, we all know the war was bad. You know, we've seen a million yeah. war movies. Everyone knows that. But uh, what's really important and what would this movie focuses on is what we did to each other and what we're yeah. doing to each other. we got to yeah. stop doing bad to each other and s- just stop it. Stop it! Yeah, and, 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 it, and I think, again, the echo chamber comments are so telling about wh- how you guys try to deflect and not realize that you're being a hypocrite in these moments because how does JoJo come to his senses? He befriends someone that he thought he hated without choice. This movie's great. It's fantastic. Uh, I love when the uh, inspectors, and he says, I wish more young boys had your blind fanaticism. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Whoosh, like, come on, perfect. Yeah. Perfect. They're trying to keep you stupid. Yeah, it was so. Talk about, 
perfect cinema, that scene when he runs and grabs the, <laughs> the grenade. That was just perfect cinema. All that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, fi- and finally, my last part of my review, again, it's top three. It is Jojo Rabbit, the shoes. Dot, dot, dot. Shoes. The shoes. The shoes. All right. And that means that, that plays multiple roles. But go ahead, Jordan. Yeah, it's it, this is a good movie. You guys mentioned, um, you know, hit all the key kind of moments of the movie. Uh, it's not enough people have seen this. I think. Um, I think it's kind of it was kind of under the radar. I've talked about this movie to people, and they say, you know, I don't, you know, never heard of it, kind of thing. Um, mm. Fantastic movie, a lot of fun. It gets some flack in the zeitgeist for maybe portraying Hitler in like a lighthearted funny way but you, you're not getting the movie basically yeah if that's you're not your paying attention on it yeah yeah you're not getting it uh but you know i love my favorite thing cracks me up every time every single time is the end where the relationship between jojo and hitler falls apart and he goes f you hitler and then he like kicks him or something and he goes flying out the window <laughs> he explodes out the window yeah, yeah i love that uh this is pop three yeah Pop three. All right, back to what we were watching. Josh, go ahead. Oh yeah, this one doesn't really does it count as a pop uh, uh, butter on top? I don't know. It's new on Prime. Jenny Slate. It's called Season Professional. It's a new stand-up uh, special. It's about an hour, a little over an hour. This is a popcorn and that's a popcorn too, bud. It's popcorn too, bud. Uh, <laughs> I, I've never seen her better. I think, and the, the, her jokes, her style is extremely conversational, and she nails it. Like she's she's really just going up there with a polished version of her personality. She's not telling punchlines; she's just talking. Um, like there's one part that I remember she said she uh, a, a a chunk of it is talking about her pregnancy and such, right? So there's motherhood and all that stuff. So whatever, take that as you may. But she said during labor, I got an epidural. And an epidural is, well, if you don't know what an epidural is, I'm not going to explain it to you. I don't care. Um, Needle in the back. Uh, and then she, everyone laughs, and she <laughs> says, well, I mean, like, I know what a fucking cummerbund is, so just look it up. Um, <laughs> she, she's, I, that, that I didn't deliver that, but, you know, uh, it's just funny. Her personality's so good. The, uh, it's just it just it makes you feel good and any, anyone's gonna like it anyone's gonna like it and uh, it's it's uh, it's great go see it prime season professional popcorn and two pop two so I watched God forbid this is a popcorn and two movie for me this is a movie that is a documentary everyone needs to see in regards to the contributors to Donald Trump and his campaign mm. for those who are unaware this is about Jerry Falwell Jr., who was once the head of Liberty University, which is a for-profit religious university. All right, let me just sum this up. Much of this revolves around how Jerry was a cuck who would fly himself and his wife down to Miami to watch his wife get cross-multiplied by a pool boy. So let me make it a football joke for you. His wife used to go heels to ceiling while the pool boy split the defenders and scored while the husband, Jerry Falwell Jr., would watch with a smile on the sidelines. Now, I don't like that. (laughs) Jerry Falwell Jr. would buy this pool boy uh, land, businesses, while he was sleeping with his wife. The pool boy had videos of the wife walking around the house talking about how bad she wanted to be with him. She would take off her panties on camera, and he has all these videos, and slide them down and talk about where he wanted to do stuff to her. Ask in the videos, do you remember this table? Do you remember this countertop? And then they denied anything happened, which is false, obviously. We've got videos. We've, we've got evidence to back up what actually occurred. At the end of the day, this person ends up stepping down. But it goes pretty deeply into the people that are contributing to your campaigns. And again, wrapping them in the cloak of religion while sitting in a corner and masturbating to their wife getting nailed by the pool boy. All right? Mm. So again, understand who your allies are. That's why I watched God Forbid, and I recommend it. Popcorn and two. Read the book. <laughs> read the book. Jesus and John Wayne talks all about that. How um, re- you know religion got uh, masculinized in a very unhealthy, toxic <laughs> way to form the modern conservative Republican God warrior, you know, kind of thing. 
I, I was just <laughs> a god warrior. I used to be a god warrior. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, what's up next? It is going to be Jordan with what he's watching. Yeah. The last – no, not the last thing I watched, but I did watch This is the Zodiac speaking on Netflix. Uh, it's a three-part bang, bang, in and out, 50-minute little mini series. And uh, it's basically the documentary version of the book that they made the movie Zodiac off of. There's a lot of references <laughs> to the movie. Yeah, I know. Follow that one. Uh, you know, the movie with uh, Robert Downey Jr. and... Ruffalo. Uh, Ruffalo and... Uh, Ruffalo. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's, it's, uh, so it's good. It just expands on a lot of the details and stuff and who the characters were inspired by. Um, it, it almost comes off as like a documentary of the movie being made at some, at a lot of, like, that's like a third of this basically. Uh, so it, yeah, they basically tell you who the killer was is this guy, Ralph Lee. Oh, Arthur Lee Allen, Arthur Lee Allen. Mm. It was this guy, Arthur Lee Allen. They found the Zodiac, Zodiac killer? killer. Basically. Yeah. Oh. He never <laughs> admitted it and there was never any like DNA evidence, mm. but there's a whole bunch of people coming out and saying like, yeah, he admitted it to me. But you know, uh, these, these <laughs> people coming out for some you kind sure? of yeah, you sure, about that? You sure about that? <laughs> some of these people appear very credible. Some of them do appear to just be kind of jumping on the wagon to get you know some kind of notoriety or a paycheck or something. I don't know. Look, mom, I'm on Netflix. Hi, uh, sort of thing. <laughs> It was good though. It was really interesting. Um, the guy, when you, they do you know interviews of him and different things like that, you're like, yeah, if he's not the Zodiac killer, he's definitely some kind of killer. Like he's definitely, definitely killed some a people. killer. <laughs> yeah, he's definitely murdered some people in his life. He does really weird murder, uh, you know, personality type things. Uh, this was a popcorn and. Two. I'll give it a two as well. Yeah, I'm feeling popcorn generous. Popcorn and two. Wow. How we got about a lot of popcorn that? and twos today. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to jump in here with I watched Blackwater Lane. It is a Peacock original. It is a horror movie. And I was just trying to get to some news. There wasn't a lot of new stuff this week. Did you guys catch that? I mean, there's some theater stuff, but not necessarily stuff I want to see in the theater. So uh, I, I, I'm sorry I asked a rhetorical question there. I apologize. I did not want your answer. So Blackwater Lane. This is... One of the worst movies, <laughs> unironically, I have ever seen. Back to back. So we we got two. We've got Time <laughs> Slice, or whatever oh, yeah. that movie was time called time, that I told you time, not to watch. And now we've got Black Blackwater Lane, where at the very end they try to paint somebody as a genius. And I was like, no. No. You're not going to try to convince me that all of her terrible acting was really just great acting. That's not what's going to happen here. <laughs> uh, the cuts are very generic. Every scene cut is... Fade to black. We're in a new scene now. Every single time. It is an incredibly predictable journey that is really just the start of what I believe to be the Hallmark Halloween series. Mm -hmm. Except for on Peacock. It, I'm not even going to tell you who's in it. I, I hate to give it a popcorn. It is a popcorn. It is called Blackwater Lane. Don't watch it. It's on Peacock. Don't watch it. <laughs> I'll Go tell ahead, you what Josh. you should be watching, though. What you should be watching, though, dude, is what's happening now, dude, is The Diplomat. Uh, there's a new season out, but I had to start from the, from the fresh. So uh, season one for me this uh, this week. Watched it all. Loved it. Carrie Russell. You might know her as Felicity. This is good, dude. She's a diplomat. She uh, She's like the <laughs> you ambassador. Don't say. Yeah. She's, <laughs> she's an ambassador in London. She wanted to go to the Middle East. That was her, her thing because she's like a... A real deal diplomat. She wants to settle some stuff and help out in the war zone. But no, you're going to London. And it turns out they're actually grooming her for vice president. There's a whole thing going on. And she's not the type. You know, she doesn't like to campaign. She just wants to get the work done. So they're like, oh, she's perfect. And so, like, the whole time they're trying to set her up. And they say, you know, I, I guess there's a statistic. Like, the majority of, no, no, a huge percentage of vice presidents were first ambassadors to London. So that's like huh. the whole setup. Um, uh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, it's that's a cool idea. So like, because you learn how to conduct yourself or something, that's the whole idea of this show. But also, her husband is also a diplomat, but he has to take a back seat this time because he's in on the. He's like, I want you to be vice. Uh, yeah. So there's a whole thing there, and they have a weird marriage, and that's interesting. And then 
just it's you know what it's a movie about politics sure but the she cuts to the core of let's get this job done and she's struggling with the the circumstance and the red tape and we all are so it's that kind of thing but it somehow makes dipl- diplomacy fresh um mm-hmm. i don't know how but it's good it's a popcorn in one show her husband has to make a speech and one of the things i really liked was he makes a speech and it's about diplomacy and he starts off with saying diplomacy never fucking works and he says all this <laughs> and then he and then he, and then he uh he says like he's tried and tried and tried and just so many times he's just failed and it never works until it does and he tells this story about how he does this and the, the story doesn't matter but he says you just keep asking and keep asking because maybe maybe and then that's how the speech ends but you know maybe we'll get we'll finally come to some sort of solution can we please just keep trying to keep talking never stop mm-hmm. trying to keep talking to each other and figure this out stop throwing stones why are we so angry this week i know why but anyway this is a popcorn and one fry Never stop, never stopping. Jordan, what's your last, what you were watching? Yeah, so the last thing I watched was Lee, starring Kate Winslet. Uh, this was a home rental. This is a fairly new movie uh, about Elizabeth Lee Miller, a model turned World War II photographer. And uh, mm. she is determined to get herself to the front line as a, as a woman. You know, this is, she's breaking barriers, basically. They didn't want a woman in combat zone. Uh, you know, anywhere near any of this, she gets, uh, you know, marginalized a lot, quite a bit throughout this movie. They're like, yeah, oh, go here, go take pictures of the women, the nurses hanging out in the women's quarters and all that. And she keeps finding ways to push the envelope, uh, break down, you know, patriarchy, all that stuff. Uh, it mm-hmm. also stars the Sam burglar who shows some <laughs> range. Andy Samberg. Yeah. <laughs> He shows some range in this. He's really cool. good. Uh, he has a very emotional scene uh, where, you know, they're, he is her co-worker. They're, they're both kind of photographers. And uh, there's a scene where they take a pictures. They, they come across a gas chamber, and they take mm-hmm. pictures of, of bodies and stuff in there. And he's like, you know, these are, these are my people. And it just – it is very real. It, mm. it is, it's, it's excellent. Yeah. Uh, one of the Scars guards is in this, the tall blonde one. The middle-aged, tall, blonde one. Uh, the guy from Challengers with the ears. Yeah. That yeah. guy. Yeah. He's in it. Oh, with the ears. Yeah. <laughs> he plays her son. Uh, yeah, this movie's cool. People in France apparently just hang out and picnic well, with their boobs out. Like, you know, just, you know, multiple couples hanging out together. But, you know, a couple of the wives just, you know. World War era France. Just have their boobs out. That's cool. Well, I mean, that's kind of normal in Portland. Just take off your shirt. There you go. I mean, I've been to a lot of parties where, like, it's it's not, it, we're just naked in the backyard. That's just what yeah. we're doing. Anyway. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, the dialogue, I mean, I'm not surprised. The whole, the movie leads you, most of the movie leads you to believe that it's kind of like a narration where she's, looks like she's getting interviewed, and then it pops to different points in her life, that old uh, nugget. And the dialogue between her and the reporter is just mind-numbing. It's really dull. The rest of the movie is really good. But then they, they throw a twist in there that I don't want to really spoil yet. But, you know, there's they, they do play with the twist there, and it actually is cool at the end. It makes you go, huh. Most of the movie is pretty straightforward. But this the ending is very kind of cerebral it's 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 good interesting twist i give this a popcorn and two as well that's the theme of the day all right popcorn and two well i watched the old man which is a popcorn and two show it is a popcorn and two show starring john lithgow jeff bridges is also in this with uh alia shawakt i can't pronounce her name but you know her as maybe from arrested development and Amy Brenneman from Judging Amy. This digs really deep into the relationship between Angela, again played by Alia, and who is her biological father, Hazmat, who owns, I believe it's a lithium mine in Afghanistan, and it digs into the inner workings of how China is involved with the Taliban, the Russia's involved with the Taliban, and you ready for this curveball? The cartels get involved with the Taliban. So you start to learn about the global economics of terror, drug trades, and uh, 
resource trades in Old Man Season 2. Jeff Bridges is the dude, just crushing it. I think that this is a good show, easy to watch, fun to watch, lots of cursing. It's on FX After Dark. It is fantastic. <laughs> Go with The Old Man Season 2 if you want to watch Go a great with show. The old man. Now, I, I'm very excited to announce what our butter on top is going to be this week. All right? Ooh. Our butter on top this week is Gladiator 2. Gladiator 2 <laughs> will be our butter on top. I, I'm stoked. I'm very excited for this film. I will I be cannot, entertained. I cannot wait. And Josh, it's on you for our Drunk Classic. You know, what a coincidence. Honest to God coincidence, because our Drunk Classic is also a Denzel. Mm. And um, I'm not sure if you've heard of it or seen it. We'll see. But Don Cheadle <laughs> as well. Okay. Any thoughts? Don Cheadle and Denzel? Not yet. Not yet. 95. Mm, no, nope. never seen it. Nope. But oh, I love well, it's called uh, Denzel. It's uh, it's called Devil in a Blue Dress. It's a noir type oh, of. I've never seen it. Down this south, on my list. hot heat of summer. Uh, you've seen this too? No, this was on my Dude. list of, of what to what oh. things I want to watch. Yeah. It's pretty good. It's a it's a pretty good movie. It's a you know. Did you give us a Denzel Rotten Washington tomatoes. movie around the same era where like there's a, a possession involved? That's me. That was well, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that was you, yeah. okay. Yeah. That was when he was just on the rampage trying to get an Oscar, um, and this was this was you know it's it's like Oscar hunting season, and this is a movie that was in that category. It's pretty good. I just gotta say, keep your eyes on Cheadle because he he delivers, and uh, it's, you're gonna like it. I love it, and I love doing this show. And if we lose any viewers due to what I've said today, prior to a conversation with me, uh, goodbye, Snowflake. I apologize for hurting your feelings. I don't. I don't apologize. You don't want to listen to facts anyway. I hope to see you all at the movies. You bring the popcorn, and I'll bring the beer.